Good morning to everyone, and um, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Particularly, I want to um, thank, um, and I guess welcome with, I'm, I'm late in doing this, but uh, our new president, Dr. Corey. Uh, that was your cue to clap. <laughs> Boy, you guys are slow today. Amen. Um, it, it's an honor uh, to meet him, and we are already committed to uh, hooking up a little later on. Now, they told me that I had uh, 30 minutes, and the four of them are already gone. Um, so we're going to move real quickly. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of John, chapter 17. Um, Great to see so many friends from way back, Glenn and uh, uh, Ron Hafer. Thank you so much. I, I heard a rumor that Ron is about to transition. Uh, that means move on. Uh, but he's been here, what, Ron, some 40 years? My goodness, you guys, well, none of you were born then, I guess. Uh, but he has served faithfully in this, in this, in this uh, ministry, and we're honored to have him. We thank God for all that you've done in touching lives, men, that are all around the world now. God bless you. In the book of John, John chapter 17, Jesus prays uh, in what has come to be known as the high priestly prayer. Um, it, it might more accurately be called the Lord's Prayer, for it is the prayer that he prayed. What we more commonly know as the Lord's Prayer is probably more accurately the disciples' prayer or the model prayer. Um, but Jesus prays on his way to Calvary, and he prays for his disciples. And in uh, the opening of this prayer, he speaks to the Father, and he says in verse 4, Father, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which you have which I had with thee before the world was. Glorify, glorify. How to glorify God. Glorify is one of those words that we use in our uh, Christian vocabulary. and that we, we sing about it, we talk about it, we pray to it, we give glory to God, we make declarations about it. But what does it mean to give glory to God? Uh, all of us would like to live our lives to the glory of God. We are created, as one uh, testimonial says, for his glory. What does it mean to glorify God? Jesus says, Father, on his way to Calvary, I have glorified you. Uh, some eight times, just in this one chapter, in this one prayer, Jesus uses the word glorify or some derivative of it. What does it mean to glorify God? I think the first clue is uh, that whatever it means, Jesus did it. Jesus says, Father, I have glorified you. And so uh, that's our first clue. If, if we want to know what it means to glorify God, let's see what Jesus says. Because Jesus says, I've done it. Here's what he says. I have glorified you. And I want to suggest that this is probably one of the clearest descriptions and maybe even definitions of what it means to glorify God. Maybe clearer than any place else in scripture, Jesus tells us what it means to glorify God. He says in verse 4, I have glorified you. And then he says, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. I have finished the work. One version says, uh, I have accomplished the work you gave me to do. One version says, I've done what you told me to do. One version says, I've done my assignment. Uh, maybe there's our first step. How to glorify God. Do your assignment. Jesus says, I've glorified you. How did he do it? He says, Father, I have uh, completed the work that you gave me to do. I have accomplished the assignment. I've done my assignment. There is an assignment on your life. There's a call on your life. There's a purpose for your life. There's not a man or woman in this room who is here by accident. There is an assignment on your life. There's something that God wants to do through you that he has sovereignly determined that he will not do through anyone else. There is a uniqueness 
on your very being. There's a uniqueness on God's call and assignment on your life. Now, Jesus says, you glorify the Father to the degree to which you do your assignment. I was a student at the University of Illinois, and I took a class uh, in criminology. To this day, I don't know why I took that class. Um, I, I cut that class every way but loose. That is not a good example for those of you who are students. Do not follow that example, please. I cut that class. In fact, I, I found out by accident, uh, just kind of thumbing through the syllabus, that the final paper was due in about three weeks. Anybody ever had a class where your entire grade was based on one or two papers? Anyone? Okay. Oh, yeah, then you know where I'm coming from. And so I find out by accident it's time for this paper. Haven't been to the man's class the whole semester. I begin to cram. I go to the library. I burn the midnight oil. And, I, and I'm sitting up at my typewriter. No computers back in those days, thank you very much. Sitting at my typewriter, typing, typing, typing. And finally, I turn in my paper. Bam! I'm kind of proud of myself. Hadn't been to the man's class the whole semester. Turning in my paper right on time. Turning in the paper. Bam! There's my paper. When I got my paper back, the man wrote notes. Now, those of you are students, your first clue... When the professor writes notes on your paper, you're in trouble right there, okay? Just know that, know that. And so the guy wrote notes, he says, he says, here are the notes. Good paper, good content, good research, grade, F. And he put the F in red ink with a circle. Now, a F is an F in black. I don't know why the man had to put the, put the grade in red ink. But, <laughs> In, in red letters with a circle around it. He, and he wrote little notes, he notes. He says, good paper, good content, good research. Grade F in red ink with a circle around it. And he wrote one more note. Good paper, good content, good research. Grade F, red ink, circle around it. But this was not the assignment. Good paper, good content, wonderful research, wonderful, wonderful research. Grade F in red ink with a circle around it, um, but this was not the assignment. Jesus says, you glorify God to the degree to which you do your assignment. What has God called you to do? What is the anointing? What is the call? What is the assignment on your life? Listen, it does not matter how well you do what you do do if you don't do what you should do. Did you get that? Oh, you missed it. Let me try this group up on this side over here. Yeah, you, 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 you glorify God when you do your assignment so that it does not matter how well you do what you do do if you don't do what you should do. Because you glorify God to the degree to which you do what Jesus did. Jesus says, Father, I've, I've glorified you because I have completed my assignment. Interesting, the word that he uses for completed or have done is the same word that he used when he hangs on the cross on Calvary and he says, Father, it is finished. Interesting. Jesus says, I've done it. I've completed it. It's finished. And yet he would hang on a cross in a matter of a few hours and then he would declare, it is finished. What is the revelation there? Your commitment to the Lord Jesus, your commitment to the assignment, to the call on your life should be so firm. That in your mind, in your spirit, you've done it before you do it. Your commitment to God, your commitment to righteousness, your commitment to the kingdom, your commitment to the word should be so firm that in your spirit, it's finished while you are finishing it. And so how do I glorify the Father? Well, here's what Jesus says. Jesus says, Father, uh, I have done the assignment you gave me to do. Look what he says in verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me, which you gave me out of the world. I have manifested. Listen, I have revealed, listen, your name. How do I, how do I glorify God? First of all, I must do my assignment. Secondly, I must display his character. Here's what he says. I, I have manifested, I have manifested your name. 
important. Listen, the name of God always is a revelation of some dynamic of the nature of God. Did you get that? His name is always some, every time you see a name of God, it is a revelation of some dynamic, some part of, some revelation of the name, the essence of God, the character of God. Jesus says, I have revealed your name, your character. I have revealed your personality. I have revealed you. I have revealed because I have manifested your name. God loves you so much, he puts his name on you. And there's a sense in which in the earth realm, as you and I move in, move in and out of time, move in, move in and out of this world, as you and I move through this world, there's a sense in which God loves you so much that he puts his name on the line in you. As you and I represent him, as you and I stand before the world and display and reveal and unfold and manifest his name, we glorify God. It is the revelation of the integrity and the character of God. You and I are um, advertisements, if you will, for the character of God. Where you go, where we go, how we handle people, how we relate to people, how we do business, how we live is a manifestation and revelation and unfolding of the character of God. How do I glorify God? I glorify God when I display his character, his integrity. Let me share this with you. As you move further into the destiny that God has called you with, with a desire to represent him, I want to suggest to you that you're going to struggle in the midst of a tension. Here's the tension. In your desire to maintain integrity and reveal his, his character, here's, your, here's this pull. You will be pulled from time to time between the tension of the intoxication of success and the devastation of insignificance. Let me give it to you again. In your desire to manifest and reveal the character of God, the nature of God, as you seek to fulfill his destiny and call on your life and to do your assignment, you'll find yourself often pulled in between in a tug between your intoxication of success. You want to do good. You want to you, you wanna make God proud. You want to do right by the kingdom. You want to do good. You want to succeed. Your struggle will be to succeed without compromising your character. The struggle, the strain will be to maintain integrity and to seek to succeed and to seek to honor God without compromising your integrity along the way. For there are those who in the interest of succeeding have bartered away their integrity. God calls you to be a manifestation of his character and integrity. But in those times when you're not struggling with the intoxication of success, you will often struggle with the devastation of insignificance. It is the challenge, it is the, the frustrating period and seasons of your life when you wonder, is this working? When you feel as though your labor has been in vain, when you're wondering, is anybody getting this? I, I go through that every Sunday night. I, I, I wondered, did anybody get anything here today? But it is a part of that, that, that devastation of frustration. You, God, God is going to call some of you to go to a place and minister to 10, 15, 20, 25, 50 people, maybe 100 people. God has called some of you right now to pastor and lead men and women into the fullness of the kingdom of God. And some of you will go through seasons and times and places where you will make, wrestle with great frustration, wondering, oh, Lord, does any of this matter? It is the devastation of insignificance. It is wondering, when will you see fruit? It is wondering, when will you see progress? It is, it is wondering, is anybody being helped? Is anyone growing? Is anyone moving into the things of God? It is the devastation of insignificance. It is when you wonder, does anyone here, is anyone getting it? How do I glorify God? I glorify God when I do my assignment. I glorify God when I display his character. Come here, come here, come here. watch this, watch this. How do I glorify God? Look what Jesus says. Jesus says, Father, now I've manifested your name, verse 6. 
unto the men which you gave me, which you gave me. They were yours and you gave them to me. They were yours and you gave them to me. You gave them to me. Ah. There's a word that implies, that, that, that also includes the idea of giving as a gift. Listen to me. Giving as a gift. He says, you gave them to me. I, 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 I received them from you. You gave them to me as a gift. How do I glorify God? I not only do my assignment, I not only display his character, listen, but I dedicate my gifts to him. There are gifted men and women in this room today. Gifted to lead, gifted to preach, gifted to teach. Gifted to serve, gifted to minister. But you do it all in his name. You do it all for his kingdom. How do I glorify God? I dedicate those gifts to him. Father, you gave them to me. I've, I've kept them. I, I've, uh, I've, I've walked with them. I, I, I lost one along the way. Uh, but, 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 but I recognize that they are gifts from you. What is your gifting? What has God given you? What has God deposited into your life? What unique spiritual ability has God given you for his kingdom, for his namesake? How do I glorify God? I glorify God when I recognize that every good and perfect gift comes from him. I, I, yeah, I, I can sing. I have some singers. I have some singers. But I sing to his glory. I, I can teach a little bit, but I teach for his glory. I, I, I've, I've been given the gift of leadership. I, I look around and people are following me. That, that is the definition of leadership, you know. <laughs> if, if, if you're leading and no one's following, you're just taking a walk. I mean, you know, leadership means that, that God's given you something that people will follow. Listen, but Jesus said to the disciples, go and make disciples of me. Because I dedicate my gifts to him. How do I glorify God? I do my assignment. How do I glorify God? I, I live my life in such a way that I display his character. How do I glorify God? I, I recognize that he has gifted me and I dedicate those gifts to him. And I, uh, my wife and I just celebrated uh, 31 years of marriage, 31 years, 31 years. And I, I look, yeah, yeah, I give myself a hand on that one, yeah. And, and nowadays especially. But, 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 I, but I look at my wife, she's a gift from God. She's just, I, I'm amazed. After 31 years, I'm amazed, Dr. Curry, I'm amazed that after 31 years that God would love me enough to love me through that woman. For 31 years, She's a gift. Now, once I recognize that that which I've received is a gift from God, I must be mindful how I handle it. Uh, some of you, uh, God has given you friends. That friend is a gift from God. You must handle that friend in a manner that honors the fact that God gave them to you. Boyfriends, girlfriends, husband, wives, they're gifts from God. Dare I say, your professor is a gift from God. <laughs> I glorify God. I dedicate those gifts. I handle those gifts as though they were a gift from him. I'm almost finished. Go back to the text. How do I glorify God? I do my assignment. How do I glorify God? I display his character. How do I glorify God? I dedicate my gifts to him. Here's the last thing. Jesus prays, and in his prayer, notice what he says in verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these men, these are of the world, and I come to thee, and I come to thee, watch it, holy father, keep thou thine own name through thine own name those whom thou hast given me watch this you keep keep them through your name those that you gave me you gave them to me listen but you keep them you missed that 
Jesus says, they're gifts from you. you. You gave them to me. Now I give them back to you. You, you gave them to me. Now, now I want you to keep them. How do I glorify God? I do my assignment. I display his character. I dedicate my gifts to him. Listen. I deposit my all in his hands. He says, Father, you gave them to me. Now, here, you keep them. He, he places them in God's hands. One of the greatest tensions that you will have as a pastor, as a leader, uh, as a ministry leader, as a teacher, whatever, is, is the constant reminder that you are to lift that ministry up to the Lord. That you are to put it in God's hands. You have a part to play. You have a role to play. You have an assignment. You're a part of it. But you lift it up to him. You, 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 you ask God to, Lord, now you keep this. You keep this church, keep this college, keep this ministry, keep this class, keep this gift. I put that gift back in his hand. I, I recognize that my hands can't hold them. It does not matter the size of the ministry. It does not matter the size of the assignment. Your hands are not big enough. You can't hold that marriage by yourself. You, you can't hold that relationship by yourself. You can't hold that class, that college, that ministry, that church. You cannot hold it by yourself. Your hands are not big enough. So Jesus says, now, you gave them to me. Now, now you keep them. I, I place them in your hands. Because I got to tell you, that's what makes the difference. It really all depends on whose hand it's in. Jesus says, I, I, I give them back to you. I place them in your hands. Because it, it all depends on whose hand it's in. If you hold on to it, you'll lose it. If you hold on to it, you'll crush it. When you release it to his hand, God gets glory. There, there was a young boy, a little boy, his, his parents bought him a parrot, a little canary, a little canary bird. Loved that canary, that boy loved that canary. He loved it, he loved it, he loved it, he loved it. He'd get up in the morning, he'd feed that bird before he went to school. He'd come home in, in the evening and he'd feed that bird and play with that bird. And he loved it, he loved it, he loved it. And, and, and one day he had been on vacation, been away to visit his grandparents, came back a few weeks later. And he, first thing he did, ran straight to the room where the bird was and he took that little canary out. And he said, oh, oh, I missed you. I missed you so much. I love you. Oh, I missed you so much. You Don't you leave me anymore. I missed you too long. I missed you. I missed you. I missed you. And he's hugging and he's squeezing and he's hugging. Oh, I missed you. I love you so much. And he's hugging and he's squeezing. I missed you so much. And he's hugging and he's squeezing and he's squeezing and he's hugging and he's squeezing. And he's, squeezing, and he's squeezing, and he's squeezing, and he's squeezing, and he's squeezing. And he squeezes the life out of the canary. If you hold on to it, you'll kill it. If you selfishly hold on to it and grip it, you'll kill it. Because the bird was not meant to be held. It was meant to fly. How do I glorify God? I receive from him and I release to him because it all depends on whose hand it's in. A block of marble in my hand is just a mound covered with dust and dirt. But a block of marble in Michelangelo's hand is magnificent David because it all depends 
on whose hand it's in. A violin in my hand, just squeaky noise. But in Istock Perlman's hands, it's the music of the masters. Because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Uh, peanut in my hand is, is just a snack. But peanut in George Washington Carver's hand is shoe polish and peanut butter because it all depends on whose hand it's in. A basketball in my hand is worth about $29.95. But in Kobe's hand, it's 52 points with a hang because it all depends on whose hand it's in. A tennis racket in my hand might get the ball over the net. But a tennis racket in Venus Williams' hand is a Wimbledon champion because it all depends on whose hand it's in. A golf club in my hand is a dangerous weapon. But a golf club in Tiger Woods' hands is a master's champion because it all depends on whose hand it's in. A slingshot in my hand is just a kid's toy. But a slingshot in David's hand will drop the Goliaths in your life because it all depends on whose hand it's in. A rod in my hand will keep away the dogs, but a rod in Moses' hands will part the Red Seas of your life because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Uh, spit and clay in my hand is just a little mud cake, but spit and clay in Jesus' hands will open up the blinded eyes because it all depends on whose hand it's in. A piece of fabric in my hand is just the bottom of my coat, but a piece of fabric in the woman's hand who pushed through the crowd with an issue of blood to touch the hem of his garment is salvation and wholeness and healing because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Nails in my hand might get you a little birdhouse, but nails in Jesus' hands, hanging on a cross between two thieves is salvation for the whole world because it all depends on whose hands it's in. How do I glorify God? I recognize that my life in my hand is a disaster, but my life in his hand brings glory to his kingdom because it all depends on whose hand is in. How do I glorify God? I do my assignment. I display his character. I dedicate my gifts. And I deposit my life in his hand. I want you to take your hands and cup them just like this. I know that seems very elementary. I want you to take these hands and cup them. Just take, take your hands and cup them right where you are. I want you to see your life in your hand. See your gifts, your calling, your ministry, your anointing, your abilities, your talents in your hands, your future in your hands. Your trial, your struggle, your problem, your frustration, your pain, your disappointment in your hand. Now I want you to lift your hands about as high as your shoulder. Lift them, lift them slowly, slowly lift them, lift them, lift them, lift them, lift them. Because it all depends on whose hand it's in. I want you to lift your hands until your hands come apart and then leave them apart. Lift it higher, 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 higher. Lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it until your hands come apart. You're now in worship position. That which you held, he now holds because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, your children, give you praise and thanksgiving for every good gift that you have released into our lives and we shall walk with them consecrating ourselves unto your glory. And now as we go down from this place, oh God, we ask that you would go before us to lead us, beside us to protect us, 
behind us to push and encourage us, above us to cover us, beneath us to sustain us, and in us to fill us with your presence and power that our lives might bring glory unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.